Bonnie Rabikoff, and this week we are in the kitchen at Tres Omer in Briarcliff Village with our executive chef, Robert Padilla. Robert, thank you for inviting us into your kitchen and to your very beautiful restaurant. Well, thank you very much, Bonnie. Okay, so what is your journey to this exquisite menu? Well, um, if you want to take it all the way back to the very beginnings, you, you, can, you can start in, in high school. Um, I started in a Botech program, uh, Northland Career Center, which is in Platte City, Missouri. Uh, I'm from actually five, four miles from here. Stay um, close to home. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted away for a little bit, but ended up back home. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I, I did the Botech program. It gave me um, the idea of, of where to start. Uh, you so, excuse me, when you entered the Votech program, you weren't specifically looking for cooking. You were exploring, or you or Well, you it was a cooking program, but oh, I might have not program. been there for all the right reasons. Um, okay. <laughs> trying more or less to get out of school, but I immediately see. it fell into place. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I have cooking throughout my entire family. We've always eaten home-cooked meals. I never had an interest in it, though, until I was put in front of it, and then it then it quickly developed. Fortunate for you. So you thought, Very oh, this will so. be, I'm going to suspect yes. that cooking, this will be a little easier. You had no idea you were going to fall in love, did no, you? No, no, not at all. Not you at all. Not. And I have, I've done absolutely nothing else since then. Okay. Um, I've cooked and cooked and cooked, and that's it. Um, but yeah, the vocational program gave me the, uh, the idea of what it was to be in a working kitchen. We cooked, uh, we cooked breakfast and lunch for the school every day. Uh, so students, staff, everybody ate what we cooked, which means we had a true working kitchen, much like what we have here. Um, that gave me the responsibility, uh, the work ethic, the drive, uh, the hunger to be right about what you're doing, um, to take that extra effort and to go that extra mile to make sure that you're producing a product that you can put your name behind, you can put your face behind. Okay, so you got that technical background in school mm -hmm. and so many of our chefs tell us from there you've just got to make sure you're working under fabulous chefs because that is key yes. to your career. Yes. Where did that take you? Well, that sent me to uh, Lydia's here in Kansas uh, City, which is the godmother of, of yeah. Italian cuisine. Yep. Uh, and where I'm at now, turned out that was the perfect fit for where I should have started. Um, so, being uh, a teenager, I worked there and basically did whatever they asked me to do. Um, did their pantry stations, did prep cooking, and from there it kind of evolved and evolved until I got the opportunity to go to Lydia's Pittsburgh, uh, where they opened their brand new restaurant. Okay. So I got to be part of that opening team. So you, you got to see from the ground up? Yes, the operations actually, yes. from the ground up and working with Lydia, we've been in we've been yes. in their kitchen too. Yes, absolutely. And what a fabulous experience. For they're you. they're an amazing group they are. Um, that has what they do down to a science. And and Lydia, you know, obviously she's the the leader, the heart, the spirit of it, and to have had an opportunity to work there, good for you. So where yeah. did you go from Lydia's? Um, from, from Lydia's Pittsburgh, I kind of bounced around in Pennsylvania for mm -hmm. a little bit, but again, always keeping in mind that I wanted to be working with the most notable chefs in, in that city, or be working in the restaurant that kind of had that buzz or that uh, idea about it. Um, and so always the, the restaurants were the local restaurants you used if not a farmer's market, you used a, a local uh, market that brought in food from the area. Um, so from there, I would always try to do a different style of restaurant um, when I would leave from place to place. So after Lydia's, I would go and do uh, French cooking. Mm -hmm. After the French cooking, I went and tried some Chinese style food. After that, I did Argentinian food. Um, so being out there and picking and choosing what style of food it might be that you want to fall into for a true career and, and once you're locked in you're there for, for life and and uh, I wanted to make sure that the style of food I, I wanted to do was the style that would keep me going throughout a career. So back to Kansas City, back to home, yeah. what, um, what is the concept for Tres Omer? Uh, the concept for what we're doing here is we are uh, what I would like to say a true Italian restaurant. 
Um, we do everything from scratch, a true from scratch restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, we do work with local farmers. We do work with our local farmers market. We try to buy um, pure foods. Uh, as far as the chicken that we use here is a purebred chicken. It's an antibiotic, hormone-free, um, natural chicken. Um, the beef that we use is a single breed, natural cattle. Uh, what we would call heritage. Yes. Yes. Yes, they are. They're like a heritage form. And I think almost kind of the sad thing is, is we have to promote those things and we have to give it a name like heritage when 50 years ago, that was just what it was. It, wa it was what it um, was. And, yeah. and what's happened is over the development of food is we've tampered with the naturalness of, of our product. Um, and we're really trying to make a focus to get back to natural, sustainable foods uh, and serve them at a, at a reasonable price and, and serve them at an extremely high quality and let those natural ingredients stand on their own without uh, too much interference from us. So you respect the food, you maintain its integrity. I was also impressed to learn that being sustainable and local is a part of what happens not only on our plate, but the way you operate back in the kitchen. Tell us about your involvement with Missouri Organics. Uh, Missouri Organics is a pro program that we started last year. Uh, we're almost a full year into it, and what it is is a recycling program. Pure and simple. Anything that's biodegradable, anything that is wood, anything that is food related, corks, any of that goes in the green trash bags and becomes uh, compost. You're supporting sustainable local green in a you know in a very significant way here at yes. Trace Omer. Tell me about the food on on the plate. You say this is a traditional Italian and what are you trying to accomplish each day with the food? The flavors of our food, we like for them to stand on their own. Um, asparagus in season is a wonderful thing. Um, and naturally, its sugars are there where they're supposed to be. Uh, tomatoes in prime season are a wonderful, wonderful thing. And what we do is we try to use these products at the right times um, and let the ingredients stand on their own. Let our guests taste what the real food, the real idea of what food should be let them taste that for themselves and what we do is we simply manipulate it a little bit to allow other people to enjoy it you know to to make a true idea and make a true composed dish okay so seasonal cooking working a great deal with your with your growers um executive chef you are providing the leadership for this kitchen mm -hmm. what are some of the what is your source of inspiration for them? What are you trying to accomplish? You're in the leadership role. Yeah. Um, well, and you know, when I think a, a, a great leg up that I might have developed unexpectedly growing up in restaurants was working for so many great chefs um, that I was really given kind of a roadmap on how to guide and lead your workers on a daily basis. In our kitchen right now is go at your pace, understand what it is you're doing, why you're doing it at the time. Um, we're a big restaurant, we're a very busy restaurant right now, and what is very important to me is that even in the heat of the moment, you guys are still remembering what it is that you're doing. And what that is, is you're producing a product to give to somebody else. And let them enjoy whatever event it is that they're enjoying. Very rarely do you come to a restaurant and see a bunch of long faces sitting silently in front of one another. Mm -hmm. Being in a restaurant is about gathering, being together, community, uh, relationships, and it's important to me that our food helps promote that. Helps to promote the experience. Yes. What is your inspiration for the food that you create? What keeps you inspired every day? I say this to the chef, well, I think it's hot, you're on your feet. It's hard work. It what is, keeps, it's very, very it's hard It's very work. hard, um, what you, keeps you going? You have to have something that, that you, you find to hold on to. Um, and for me, what it is, is it's a non-stop process. It would be impossible for me to learn all of the ideas of food. Because by the time I would learn what's already been taught, an entire generation would have come up with something brand new. Um, so food never stops. Okay. 
the more you create, the more ideas are given to somebody else who then takes that and becomes something else. Um, you know, no food, I believe, is a true original idea. Once you put that idea out there, it's, it's out there. So a guy can walk by and grab what you did turn it one way or another and it becomes their dish and it is truly a different dish, but the ideas fell from somebody else. So it's really about sharing. I, we always say we stand on the shoulders of others mm. and this is particularly true for food. I know that seasonal is key to mm -hmm. what we experience here and that you have personal relationships with the growers. Mm -hmm. Today happens to be a market day at Briarcliff Village. Yes. What say you that we go out and visit with one of the growers and buy some of that produce and then go into the kitchen and cook it? Uh, so today we'll go out and take a look and we're going to prepare our duck dish that is off of our new menu and uh, we'll see what he's got out there to play with. Okay, let's go shopping. All right. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and this week we are at Tres Omer in Briarcliff Village. We have been talking to their executive chef, Robert Padilla, and he has asked that we come out to the farmer's market that they have here every Thursday to do some shopping before we go into the kitchen. Robert, this is one of your favorite farmers. Who are we talking to here? Yes, this is uh, Jerry Newman from Providence Farms. Uh, he is our main supplier of all uh, of the produce that comes in farmers, uh, farmer-wise, and um, we work with him on a weekly basis to, uh, to develop our menu. So, Jerry, I mean, you're a, a person of influence. What you're growing and what you're harvesting has a direct effect on what's going to appear on the menu here at Trays on the Mare. So let's talk a little bit about what's in season right now and the special care that you're taking with growing this produce. Well, we have uh, cheddar cauliflower. We have... Uh, this is gorgeous. Yeah. Cauliflower we usually think of as white. Yes. And so, and, and Robert and I have also talked about how more color is more nutrition and frequently more flavor. Yes. Cauliflower. Okay. What else are we going to be cooking with here? We've got some real nice asparagus. Beautiful. And uh, we also have some uh, French breakfast radishes. Stunning. Okay, tell me your philosophical approach to growing this produce. How are you caring for these vegetables and your earth? Well, we like to say if you feed the soil, it'll feed you. Okay. And I want to do it as natural as possible. Sustainable, we like to treat the, the earth and the soil just the way it's supposed to be treated. We don't want any nasty stuff. No synthetic fertilizers, mm -hmm. no pesticides, no herbicides, we just, have to share a little sometimes with the bugs. Okay. But, uh, you know. Thank you, too. <laughs> it's all part of what Well, if the bugs right. won't eat it, then I don't want to uh, eat it. Probably. So, yeah. uh, we don't do no GMOs. We don't do none of that kind of stuff because mm -hmm. it's not natural. Okay. And uh, we want to give our customers and Chosen Mary the best possible produce we can. And that means going the extra mile. We want to give them the stuff that, that just looks good. I mean, and they have been wonderful working with us. They give us lists, we grow what they want, and we go from there. So this is a real relationship between executive chef and grower. Yeah, absolutely. We've been working together for quite some time now, and we start to develop ideas of what we want in the ground the season before uh, so that we can start to make up what that menu would be that following season. That following season. And you know, a lesson to those of us who may want to have a kitchen garden at home and reducing the carbon footprint by either growing it at home or going to your neighborhood farmer's market and, and then cooking seasonally, which is most nutritious and most flavorful. I want you to know that we appreciate the extra care you're taking. This. These vegetables are rare. We don't see them every day. And Chef, I think that we should go in the kitchen and I think we should start cooking with some of these vegetables. What say you? Oh, let's do it. Okay. All right, thank you All very right. much, Jerry. And it was so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, okay. thank you. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and this week we are in the kitchen at Tres Omer in Briarcliff Village with their executive chef, Robert Padilla. 
thank you so much for inviting us into your kitchen. Thank you, Bonnie. What's the signature dish today? Okay, today we're gonna be preparing a sauteed duck breast with oven roasted cauliflower, sauteed asparagus, finished with a chocolate cherry sauce. Oh, yum. And these are all okay. farmer's vegetables. These are farmer's vegetables, which we talked about earlier and just going right from the grower into the kitchen. I know you already told me that the seasonal produce helps you decide your menu. Yes, we prepared uh, our menu back in January with Providence Farms, who's dedicated their produce to us. Um, so we prepped kind of our menu in December and January so that the vegetables would be ready for spring, uh, which has kind of inspired our menu for this spring. Okay, all right. Now, mise en place, chef, what do we have before we begin cooking? What have you prepared for this dish? Okay, so today our mise en place will include, obviously, our duck breast, which yes. we pre-seared. Okay. So here we will have duck breast that's been pre-seared off. And now, how did you do that? With olive oil? With what? What we do is we start off in a saute pan with a little bit of blended oil. Yes. Uh, we season the skin of the duck uh, with just salt and pepper and slowly cook the duck. Uh, so that the skin renders the fat down and you end up with a nice crispy skin of your duck So it is important that you do prepare your duck ahead of time a little bit to cook that skin down Okay, so this has already been seared. Yes. Okay. That's now correct. what else do we have? Uh, so to accompany the duck tonight we have uh, From Providence Farms. We do have the cheddar cauliflower here that is exquisite. This is supposed to be yellow. Yes, and this is. we're already told that the more color a vegetable has, the more flavor and the more nutrition. Yes. Okay, and what else do we have on um, our sides? Here we also have some asparagus that they've grown. Gorgeous. So we've cut it in half and kind of prepped it. Ah, okay. So we've got our farmer's asparagus that's uh, just been cut in half. Um, here we will use uh, some of their radishes as a garnish, um, so we'll use that at the end of our dish. And what's unique about, I believe this is the French breakfast radish, yes, which this is has breakfast radish. Uh, a, d a little bit different flavor profile, but it's exquisite. It's very fresh. Yes, it, it should be a very fresh, crisp, clean flavor to you um, with maybe a hint of bite at the very mm -hmm. end. Okay. Be very good. What else do we have here, Chef? So, so to finish our dish, we will use uh, our basic veal demi glaze here. Um, so, what we do is we buy a, a, a bulk of veal bones and slowly cook that down over time. Uh, and as that reduces, it gets thicker and thicker, and we end up with a demi glaze. Now, I know that that everything's made from scratch here, but should uh our listeners and viewers wish to get this product and they're not going to. Yes. Can they buy this off the shelf? Well, at, at a Long higher end. Won't like this, but. Correct. Yeah. At, a, at a higher end market, yes, they, they have started selling um, prepared demi glaze in, in tins. Um, any any high end market in Kansas City should be able to, to carry okay. that for you. And here we have uh, here oh, is yum. Just some, cho uh, some cocoa powder, un unsweetened. Um, just your very basic cocoa powder, and, and we'll use that to thicken the sauce and give it the flavor of chocolate without adding the sugar to it. Okay. So it remains a savory dish. Okay, so we've prepared all of our ingredients. We're now ready to cook. Where do we begin? Okay, so we'll start off here with our saute pan. Uh, first things first, we should bring the duck up to temperature. Um, I really like to think of this as kind of a no-rush dish, uh, meaning Take your time with it. Let the duck heat up nice and slow once you've rendered that skin down. Um, and the end product will be a crispier, more flavorful skin on that duck, which really adds a nice element to your dish. So you could prepare all of these ingredients that morning or even the day before and just refrigerate this? Absolutely. Um, if you live in the Northland or you're familiar with our farmer's market that we have every Thursday, you can in theory, come up here in the afternoon, pick out your vegetables for the day, go home, prepare your meal that evening, and um, if you've got that duck ready to go, it'll take five, ten minutes, and you've got the freshest produce you can have. And also for entertaining, once you get the ingredients prepped, it, it reduces the anxiety, and you get a better result. Exactly. Okay. I think if you plan ahead and you think about what you're going to do ahead of time, um, you can enjoy what you're doing a little bit more and not have to worry and so about it. your guests. Your guests, Absolutely. your guests feel more at ease and they enjoy themselves and they than you are. I notice you're warming up this. You're yes. warming the pan first and about, and so if we were at home, would we be going 
going for a medium. A nice medium heat. And, a and medium sure. heat. Sure. Okay. And again, uh, with the duck breast, again, it's already been seared, so you're just nice and slow and low. Okay. Uh, this is just a little bit of blended oil. You don't need to use your high quality extra virgin Absolutely olive oil. Not, no. You don't you want, want to use the flavor. Your very basic oil. Okay. Really, what you're doing is just providing a buffer between your product and the saute okay. itself. So. All right. So, so it's we'll warmed take, up. You've added the oil. Yes. We'll take our duck breast, okay. and again, it's already been prepared. We'll skin set it in the pan. side down. Skin side down again to have your duck render the rest of that skin, and as we reheat it, as the fat comes out, you'll get a nice crisp skin on that duck. People who really enjoy duck, I find that a medium is a very good temperature to be eating your duck, um, but there's absolutely no reason you can't have it well done or anything like that. Um, it really is at the, it is really at the discretion of, of uh, who's eating that dish. Okay. All right. um, but this, today we will prepare medium. Um, so really what we're going to do is just let it slowly come up to heat, and while that's doing it, we will prepare all the rest of okay. the Okay. So now that's coming up to heat. What next, Chef? All right. So we'll come in here and we'll play with some of the vegetables. So what we've got is again the farmer's asparagus, which is is pretty much ready to go. What we've done is cut the bottoms off and then cut the asparagus in half. Okay, and you've made sure that you get off that woody, tough yes. part. Yes. This is gorgeous and, asparagus. And a, a good rule of thumb with your asparagus when you buy it uh, whole and fresh is if you take it and break it, your natural break will separate that woody part from your very edible, delicious part of your asparagus. Okay. So just a natural break, and you should find it. You're looking for a tight head. Yes, very tight nice head. tight head, and it, what that will indicate is freshness of the product. Also, should you not have access to this wonderful, this particular mm. cauliflower, you could use the traditional white cauliflower. Absolutely, any okay. cauliflower would do. Once it's cooked, your flavors are going to basically be cauliflower flavor. Okay. In Trezzo Amari, we're really about using food at its base. Um, I don't like to change the integrity of what we're using too much. Um, I cook the food to kind of amplify the flavors that it naturally produces. How I was brought up in Italian cooking is the basis of Italian food. We'll just and take you our cauliflower. That with you to Tres absolutely, yes, absolutely. You did. So here we'll just take our, our cauliflower and break it up. And what I do is I'm just looking for nice little heads. Uh, again, this is a raw product, so if you keep it small like this, uh, it is very easy to cook and it takes a, a, very, a relatively short amount of time. And in your attempt to have them of similar size, meaning they'll all get cooked at about the same time. Yes. You set the duck to one side, you put a cover over it to help finish it cooking, and it's just about ready to go. Now what? Okay. So what we're going to do now is start to prepare the vegetables. Um, most vegetables that we do in, in Trezomari, we like to do in whole butter. Uh, the fat of that butter helps add just another uh, element to the dish, uh, and as it caramelizes, it will give you kind of a natural nutty flavor uh, to your dish. And I think the important thing to note is that you don't have to use a ton of it, yet, but yet the flavor is... Absolutely. You can't, you can't substitute butter. You, you really cannot substitute butter. And, and in our restaurant, we the butter we go through is, is quite a quite a bit of butter. Um, again, we're a very large restaurant, but each dish butter is an integral part to to, to finishing that product. And obviously, this is um, sweet butter, unsalted. Yes, yes, that is correct. We so you can control butter. absolutely. Okay. Um, and what we do, uh, and is very important to I think cooks, is you you have the control. Um, meaning, if you're going to be using a product that has salt in it, you don't have control over that end product. Um, so always go with unsalted butter um, and always season less because you can always add a little bit more at the end or your guests can always add a little bit more if that's their taste, but you can never take away. Um, and it'd be a sad day if you ruined your entire dinner. Yes, board. it would be a sad day. Now, you have decided the butter is ready because... Yeah, the butter's melted all the way through, and we've started to come come up with a little bit of oil. Okay. Um, and so we'll go ahead and add our cauliflower in. Um, so in goes the cauliflower. We'll add a pinch of salt. Right and this here. is kosher salt. This is, we use straight kosher straight salt. Kosher salt. Um, again, fresh cracked pepper. Yes, we do use fresh cracked pepper. So we'll have our peppercorns here with our grinder. And we'll just add that right in. So now what we're kind of looking for on this cauliflower is to get some caramelization to it. So we'll kick the heat up to high. Um, 
again, helping using your butter and, and letting it melt down first and adding it to that will help uh, in that caramelization process as your butter will start to brown. Because um, caramel, caramelous flavor. Caramelous flavor. Caramelous flavor. Absolutely. Um, so as this is sauteing uh, here, smell, again, course. we'll kind of Heaven. go into the same thing with our uh, uh, asparagus. Okay. So we'll start off with a little bit of butter. And you know, we're learning about fats. And we, one of the lessons that we've learned is the most dangerous fat is the hydrogenated oil. Yes, yes the trans fatties. Right. And so this hasn't been processed no. or, no. That's correct. In our restaurant, again, what we're using is, is true to life products. We don't want food that's been altered um, or designed to make a flavor artificial. Um, so we use whole unsalted butters. Um, we use clarified butter uh, when we're doing different applications with that, which we clarify ourselves. Um, which essentially is letting the butter fat or the milk part come up to the top and then it gives it a higher boiling point. Yes, so. and it can be used a lot like oil. Sure can. Um, so again, we're sauteing our uh, cauliflower here. And if you can see that you are starting to Gorgeous. get some of that nice yes, caramelization beautiful. on it. Um, and really that's what we're looking for as to, uh, to really help enhance some of these flavors. And you know, and, and I know you have a child, and um, we're encouraging our children to eat more vegetables and plant foods, and providing this kind of flavor with them is so enticing. We don't really have to force our children to eat vegetables when we take care of them like this. That's, yeah, I agree with that completely. And I think using things like farmer's vegetables gives you the opportunity to show your children maybe something a little bit different and fun. Um, you know, I get a kick still out of seeing the, the orange cauliflower as opposed Beautiful. to white. And, Beautiful. you know, here in the next few weeks, our cauliflower will be purple. Um, I get a kick out of seeing those things. I think it adds an interesting element to food and it makes people, again, you eat with your eyes as much as you do with your stomach and I think that that helps people be enticed to go for something. You know, when children, well, we, adults too, love color. And that's another draw to eating this really high quality healthy food. Absolutely, and, and the food we're doing here at Trezzo, um, High quality is first and foremost, um, but also what we are doing is trying to offer some healthier options to people. So what we'll do here now is the cauliflower should be for the most part ready. Okay. Um, now what oh, we are going to do is add a little bit of chicken stock to this, uh, okay. just to kind of deglaze and let that steam further break down your product so that there is a, a, a very- little more tender. A little more a tender. Little more tender. A, a take out uh, some of that again, LJ. And again, I know you make your own chicken stock, but easy enough to buy off the shelf. So we will add our so chicken broth. So a little bit of that. Here. So just about an ounce. Oh, just that, a little bit, Just yeah. to help it again finish it off, and then we will do the same thing with the asparagus here when it's ready. When you prep, you got your mise en place, then your family and friends stand around. They get a chance to get excited really? like our celebrity taster is over here. They get a chance to get excited about the food. Carl DiCapo has been sweet enough. Now he has his oh, nose yes. in I mean, it. I mean, look. Let yes, look, please. duck. Yellow cauliflower, yeah, right. asparagus. Yeah. But do you know what kind of sauce you're getting on this? No. A chocolate cherry sauce. Really? <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. See, we couldn't keep our celebrity taster out of the kitchen. He knows a little bit about kitchens as he used to own them. Well, it's 46 years Italian ago. Italian garden. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's fantastic to have you, and you are more than welcome to be here and to taste this food. Yeah. I sure will. Okay, the duck is finishing up, the vegetables are finishing up. Time for the chocolate cherry sauce. Yes, chocolate cherry sauce. Okay, let's go for it, Chef. We're All gonna... right, and so with this sauce, again, we're gonna add our uh, veal dimmy glaze here. All right. Um, now the thing with this sauce is it's it's not a dessert sauce. It is it is a, a savory sauce. Okay. So don't let chocolate mislead you in this and thinking that it's a very, very sweet sauce. It is very savory. Um, we use unsweetened chocolate and the chocolate is more there to thicken the food as to give it that aroma and that hint of chocolate that you know and taste. And I know that um, a Mexican cooking does well, several. Yes. Several um, cultures use chocolate as a depth of flavor, not just dessert. And actually this dish originated from, from kind of that original idea of okay. the sauce mole. Um, 
chicken mole is, is food that I grew up with as a kid uh, and still eat at different family events. Um, and being in a fine dining restaurant, you want to serve things that inspired you growing up, but you have to kind of alter them to help make it something more modern day. Um, but you're so, still sharing your culture with us, thank you. Absolutely, and, and again, you. I think it's a wonderful play on, on that original idea, but it definitely is not mole, so. Okay, so the demi glaze is heating up. Yes, and, and it's ready to go, and what we're gonna do is just melt this down and we'll add some butter to it. We'll whisk in the chocolate, hit our cherries, um, and they'll go in at the very end. Okay. And we'll be all ready to go. How do you hit your cherry? All right, so what you can buy in most stores, you can just buy a little cherry or olive pitter. Um, do I get to do this? Absolutely. Do I do it this so end or the other? So if you set it in that way, and you just give it a squeeze, the pit falls I've never out. done this before. Well, it's, it's very exciting. Oh, it, in addition to exciting, it happens to be very easy. So we're ready, we're warm, we're nice and warm here. Um, we'll add a little bit of butter, again about maybe a tablespoon of butter. Um, you're going to really obtain your richness from the chocolate, not the butter this time. So the chocolate is going to be what you're really looking to use. Um, as that butter mixes up, we're going to basically do the same thing with the chocolate. Um, Just plain, there's no sweetening to this. That's correct. This, this is cocoa powder. This is cocoa powder. Okay. So we'll take it and just add this in. Oh, you can do about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half, I think. And you should get a nice flavor with that. So with the cocoa powder, it does definitely help to use the whisk and kind of whisk that in. Oh my. And you can immediately start to get the aroma oh. of, of what, what we're trying to obtain here. The fruit and the chocolate is a great traditional combination. Yes. Summer. So as this kind of comes up, if you let this boil, it'll start to tighten and thicken. Yes. Um, we'll let this thicken up a little bit, but you definitely don't want it to be too thick. And we're going to move into our cherries. Um, I like to just cut them in half. Uh, it helps them break down and then they'll go a little bit farther in your dish. Um, softens them up a little bit also. And you're adding them now to the sauce because the sauce is lively boiling and it's thickening up. It's getting the consistency that you need. Yes, and that heat will help help disperse some of this cherry flavor into the sauce too, which can add a little bit of uh, complexity to your sauce without doing that many complex things. Uh, so we'll add our cherries right in and they go. So we have our cherries and I'll go ahead and turn this sauce off and just let that kind of steep and it'll be ready for service. So the final step is, is we'll take our duck breast. Nice, ready to go. Should be a lovely medium. I'll rest it on a towel to help kind of soak up some of that excess oil and then what you see is you have a very nice rendered down skin on your duck. When you let your food rest, it allows all of its natural juices to go back into the meat and hold there, uh, so then you have a more succulent piece uh, when you cut into it and, and eat it. Okay. Very quickly, when cutting duck skin side down, helps your knife go through it much easier, and I am a big fan of the duck being cut very, very thin, uh, which again, allows people to enjoy it, uh, savor it a little bit more. Um, and against the grain, Yes, always against always. the grain, yes. um, which will help your food kind of break itself down a little bit, which will make it naturally more tender uh, for you to eat. Now the okay, Chef, you know we eat with our eyes first, and this is your canvas, white plate. So many chefs use white plates. How do we, how do we plate it? All right, now the plating is, is really up to the person who's, who's making the dish. Um, so since that would be me today, I'll go ahead and plate it how I see fit. Um, but there is no wrong way and anybody plates how they, how they want. Okay. Um, so what we'll do first is I would like to lay down some of the cauliflower here, okay? So the cauliflower again, and these nice little pieces, it allows you to play with the food a little bit more, plate it in maybe a little bit more interesting way or a different way each time. And you know, it doesn't need to be horribly complicated. You're just trying, you're looking for eye appeal. That's here. right. Yeah. Absolutely. You're looking for eye appeal. Uh, a lot of times less is more. Yep. Um, and once you overthink something, you may have gone too far. And yep. if you keep it simpler, 
it, it, your food will be wonderful. And it feels more accessible to your diner. Absolutely, you not don't want to feel like they have to go through some architectural. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to. You don't want to intimidate people. You want people to feel comfortable. Um, you want people to feel at home in, in your place, and when you're serving them food. Do uh, a little lattice work. Yeah, and Very again, cute. we're just setting it kind of however we see fit. Okay. Um, so again, this will be the base for our dish. What we'll do now is take our duck breast, and it's been nice, thinly sliced. Yes. And we'll just lay it right over the top of our vegetables here. Beautiful. Okay. And nice shingles. Again, you can see the skin of the duck, and it's been rendered down really nice. You've got that nice golden brown on top, uh, which really makes for a really delicious piece of meat. Okay. And now for that amazing and unique. Yeah, and and again, it's something for me. I like to try to give people a little something new to talk about, something new to try. They're going to talk about. Uh, and I hope and I hope that people really enjoy this and again feel comfortable eating it and are not intimidated by anything that we're doing here. So our chocolate cherry glaze. Yeah, and what I like to do in most sauces is I take whatever that ingredient is and we can just kind of lay it right on top. So there it'll sit. And then from there, yeah. we can just plate it around. Because you know, people like the perfect bite. They like to yeah. take pieces of each item on the plate, dip it in the sauce. They and figure out what that perfect bite is for them. Yes. And, and again, uh, at, at the level of food we try to produce, it is that where you want a little bite of everything and it becomes the completed dish and it's a full thought that goes all the way through start to finish. Okay, well, Chef, from here we need to go to the bar. Yes. We need to pair it with a wine of your choice and then we have a very hungry celebrity taster. Well, I can't wait. Thank you for letting us be in your kitchen. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff and we have been cooking in the kitchen at Tres Omer in Briarcliff Village with their executive chef, Robert Padilla. We have made a duck breast with vegetables right from their farmer's market, cauliflower, asparagus, and to complicate things, we've added a chocolate cherry sauce to the signature dish. What to drink? We are now going to ask that question of Jeff. Jeff, who is the general manager here, what should we drink? Today we've paired the duck with a Robert Sinski Pinot Noir from Carneros region. This is a 2008. And we chose this because it's got very bright cherries to go along with the cherry and chocolate sauce. Excellent. And it's got just the right amount of acidity to cut through duck, which can sometimes have, you know, the duck fat. So and you know, Robert put some butter in with these vegetables, so we have some serious... There's and delicious fat with the dish. Yes, indeed. And the, the acid in this cuts right through. It does. And because of the cherry notes in the wine, it's going to work great with the cherry chocolate sauce. It pairs perfectly. Pairs perfectly. Yes. Well, we have with us a celebrity taster, someone very well known to many of us in Kansas City, Carl DeCapo. He has owned a restaurant for 46 years in Kansas City Italian Gardens. And he's going to come in, he's going to sip the wine and taste the food. I think you've done a great job, though. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and we have just been in the kitchen at Tres Omer in Briarcliff Village with our executive chef, Robert Padilla. We have paired our dish with a Pinot Noir from Napa Valley, and to taste this creation and sip the wine is one of Kansas City's civic leaders and longtime restaurateur, Carl DeCapo. Carl, thank you for taking time out of what is frankly a frenetic schedule to come and taste our food. Let me tell you again, <laughs> any accolades that I've received is because I was there at the Italian Garden for 46 years. 46 years. And I know years. everybody in Kansas City. You know, and I... And it's basically whenever you call I'm... anything to do with restaurants, I will be there. You know, obviously you have a long history of what makes for a good restaurant and good food. Absolutely. You also have been a wonderful civic leader with the National Agricultural Hall of Fame, the Liberty yeah. Memorial. You, there are many, many great causes that you Crime have supported. Crime Commission, the Salvation Army, 
BA. 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 All of them. We do it all, man. Now you you must be hungry from all this work. I sure am. Oh, you are. Okay, we're chef. Gonna have, we're gonna have pasta. You know, no. No. But you've <laughs> had so many years of pasta, we thought we'd introduce something a little different. That's fine. Okay, chef, what do we have? All right. This evening we will be eating our sauteed duck breast with the farmer's cauliflower and asparagus, fresh cherries, and a chocolate sauce. A chocolate sauce, Carl. Now you have to start tasting this and tell us what you think. Tell us what you're tasting. I'm going to join you. First I'm going to try the cauliflower. And it is a yellow cauliflower, literally just purchased from the farmer's market today. Not, not cooked too much. No. Okay, I'm going to do this with you. So you actually, you actually get oh the taste of the cauliflower. You do. That is marvelous. The Italian people eat a tremendous amount of cauliflower. This is yellow cauliflower. Obviously, the season is for asparagus in spring. What I'm really enjoying is the chocolate cherry sauce. Mm -hmm. I love the way they cut that because it really, it gives the meat time to, to breathe. It you does. Know, it does. And so this is duck with cherry chocolate. Mm-hmm. Duck with that. Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing? Oh, it's excellent. Oh, it's excellent. And. Yes, tell me. I tried it without the sauce. Yes which is a true test, and then now you're trying it with the sauce and the cherries. It adds mm. to the flavor, mm -hmm. because it, it has a distinct flavor with it, with the cherries in it, and the chocolate. Normally, you don't ever feel that that's going to be, you know, permissible in when, you, when you're cooking, and especially. Well, you've done a beautiful job of sharing the Italian culture and its foods with Kansas City. Yeah. Robert Padilla is bringing some of the Hispanic flavors to us here with the mixture of the chocolate and the cherry as not a sweet but more of a savory dish. Mm. And the asparagus is excellent. Oh. It's real fresh. Mm -hmm. Literally just purchased yeah, today yeah, from the farmer's real market. It's actually it's delightful. It's delightful. Now, part of your assignment, Carl. Oh, the asparagus. I mean, it is nutty. To your health. Appreciate done. Okay. You know what that means? No, what? For a hundred years. For a hundred years to your health. And, and Lakayam, I know you know what that means. Mm -hmm. It's to life. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Is that good with the cherry? I love Pinot. Oh. It's excellent. Great wine. Great, Great wine. wine. Well, Carl, I mentioned it at the beginning of this segment, but you are such a part of the fabric of Kansas City for so many things that have been important to our community. Um, from the Liberty Memorial, to the veterans, to the crime prevention, to the National Agricultural Hall of Fame, you have helped us remember our veterans, helped us remember the people who've worked so hard to feed us over the years with the agricultural department and our growers and all things related to food. I, I want to thank you not only for taking the time to come here and taste this wonderful work of this young chef, but also thank you for everything that you have done and continue to do for Kansas City. This is remarkable, really mm -hmm. remarkable. I've never eaten a sauce like this, Isn't this with the chocolate and the, and the cherry. And you know, to have these young chefs, and you know that this show celebrates the talent, the artistry of our chefs in Kansas City, and we have to be grateful for that too. The care they take, the devotion that Chef Robert has to the farmer and to preserving the integrity of the food. But isn't this an, this is an amazing sauce? I mm -hmm. have to bring my wife here. I think you should. My wife is a chocolate Well, she's a woman after my own heart. Right. And you know, and to have something like that, she would go crazy. Well, I hope you do choose to to bring your wife here. 
Again, I want to say thank you for being on In the Kitchen and for everything you do for Kansas City. Well, let me tell you again, like I told you a while ago, all you do is call and I'll be there. I know, you always have been. Thank really. you. Thank, thank you so you. very much.